Well, it's one of them days again, and I know from all the feedback we've had, you love the live matches that I do. And again, you're putting me under a massive amount of pressure. The cars are white. This is one of the, well, I think this is the coldest morning we've had this, uh, this winter. Everything is freezing. It was zero degrees this morning. We've had a lot of rain and it's gone mega, mega cold. And I actually fished this lake. Luckily, I've actually fished this lake once since the work has been done. So they've actually desilted this lake at Acorn Fishery called Paddock Lake. It's a fantastic snake lake. It's sort of between 13 and 14 and a half meters wide. There's lots of silvers, tench, skimmers, normal things, but there's lots of carp. A few F1s, but lots and lots of carp. This is gonna be proper tricky today because the water, because the amount of rain we've had, the lake's still got a lot of color in it. And it's probably one of them sort of days you think, you know, when you look at the color of the water, you think it's gonna be brilliant. And sometimes it can have the total reverse effect. So the fish can all come off the bottom and it is just one of them days. It's going to be one of them days. It's going to be tight pegging today. I think there's about 26 booked on and there's only 30 pegs on this lake. You can obviously hear the guys laughing and joking in the background, probably wondering what I'm doing here and wondering if they're going to beat me today. And they will be trying to beat me. You know, there's no two ways about it. So it's one of them days, obviously, if you pan around the grass salt, you'll see that it's actually white. It's freezing cold. My hands are absolutely freezing. But we all know you love the live matches and that is what this day is going to be all about so we're going to go now do the draw fingers crossed for a nice peg i'll see where i draw and then i'll make a decision on whether i actually got a fish for silvers or carp because like i said there is a lot of silvers in there but let's have a look at the draw and i'll have a chat later Ready to go, well, sort of ready to go. I've done all my bait. I've got a little bit of Thatcher's, uh, Pro Thatcher's Green mixed up. Uh, I've done some soaked micros that are soaked up to the gun. I've not set a feeder rod up today because it is absolutely, even though it is absolutely bitterly cold this morning, like I said, it's probably zero degrees. It might even have been minus one or minus two early hours of this morning. None of us know how this is going to affect it because we've had such a warm summer. We've had a couple of frosts, but this is like the start of winter now, I think. I think the, the there's a bit of an easterly wind about as well. Um, let's talk about Acorn Fishery, the Pallet Lake. Well, it's a typical snake lake. It's been um, desilted recently. I've done loads of work on it, as you can see. And they've actually built the shelves back. The shelves over like probably 15 years have melted away but they've put the shelves back in, so there's some lovely shelves to fish on, which hopefully I can catch me fish on it. Um, we'll talk about the rigs, I think, as I get going, and whilst, and, and you know, when I pick the rigs up, basically, it's all F1 maggots, from 4B10 to 4B14, because down the middle is probably six foot, and then you've got the shelves over, and there is a nice shelf about three, three and a bit foot. Um, I've got a spare peg to me right, uh, it's really tightly pegged today because there's a lot of people about, uh, which is good. I've drawn peg 18. Um, truthfully, not the greatest of areas. I think if, it's, if it was warmer and the fish were really active, I think you can get away with drawing a lot of pegs on this lake. But now the winter's here, you know, as we all know, there is certain areas. I think we'll have a day's fishing, but wherever I'm going to compete with some of the pegs that I would love to have been on, I don't know. I honestly don't think so, but you never know. Fish, you know, fish can swim. It's not been the greatest area recently, uh, but all I can do is, is try my hardest. There is a lot of silvers in here. There is a silverfish pool today, because they split it, carp and silvers, which I think is a great idea, because a lot of the guys that come here don't want to fish for carp, they just fish for silvers. So I will have silverfish in my mind, 
whether I go for silvers full, full on, I don't think I will. I want to try and give myself a chance of catching some carp as well. And I also want to try and catch some carp for you guys because it is about live match fishing. Um, bait wise, I've got maggots, ground bait, corn, some micros that I've soaked to the maximum. I've got some pro expanders, four mils and six mils. I've also got some pinkies. Um, and at the moment, my ground bait, I've just actually got some ground bait and micros mixed together. 70% ground bait and 30% micros because I think it's going to be tough and I know the, the carp and the silvers love ground bait in this venue and I've you know fishing it for quite a lot of years I've not fished it I've only I've only actually fished this once recently what well, since the work's been done on the pole um, but there you go it's what it is it's cold it's really misty at the moment it's, it's absolutely bitterly cold Zolt is like this with his hands because he knows his cameras are going to play up because they do when it's cold but we'll run for it. There's a roach or something just top there. Um, yeah, so who knows? Let's get going and obviously we'll talk through it when uh, when my float starts going under with a bit of luck. Uh, but let's fingers crossed that we'll have a great day's fishing. I'm sure we will. It's a great venue. Yeah, solid with, with carp and silvers. Uh, even though I've not drawn one of the areas that I'd like to have been on, I'm sure I'll have a, few, a day's fishing and hopefully you'll pick up some great tips. Oh, hello. Right, let's get going. So, I'm gonna start on bread. That's one bait we didn't talk about when um, when we were just talking, but I have got some bread with me. I am gonna put in, but I'm gonna feed. I'll run you through the little lines that I've got. So, 11 meters. They were slightly into the spare peg. I'm just gonna put a little ball of ground bait and some maggots. And that line really, bear in mind I'm talking about Silver's cart. There's not many F1s in here. And that short line at the moment, I'm just gonna put a little ball of micros in. Cause I think, I'm trying to picture myself at the end of the match as well. Not maybe during the match. I don't wanna put maggots in there at the moment. I'm just gonna put in Micros, and I can fish bits of core, and I can fish like expanders, maggots on the hook, and baits like that. And it's the same at 13 meters. I've got a shelf, the same sort of shelf as I've got to my right and towards the empty peg. There's quite a lot of lines going, and you'll find that on canal rigs, or sorry, snake lakes, or canal style lakes. So it's 13 metres, it's not the best of shelves here, but I, right on the end of my pole, I'm just going to feel a little bit of bait like that. Let's stick the 14 half metre piece on. Because I'm going to start over and see if I can make a few early carp and see if there's any carp in the area. But first off, I'm going to just feed a little bit of bait. A few micros again, down to my right, because there's a lovely shelf, and we'll talk about that as we're sort of fishing. If I go on it, well, I will, definitely will be going on it. But it's going to be a tough day today, I think, here. Just got myself marked up with a tree on the opposite bank. And I'll make your mind up in a bit where I'm going to throw some maggots or whatever, really. But let's get over on bread. I've got my punch kit here. Bit of Worthies, Wor Wor Warbington's rather. So I'm going to start on a 10 mil punch. Just squeeze it down. Little 4B10 F1 maggot with 111s off so it sticks up a bit. Make sure that sinks. That's one thing you've got to watch with bread. Just make sure it sinks. Like that. Starting about 8 inches off the deck. Bread's just come off. I certainly soak the water up that piece of bread, that's for certain. Let's get another piece of bread on. Squash it down. Like that. First time this winter I've put a piece of bread on. I 
like I say, it's not the greatest of areas. Let's get it over. So obviously where I'm fishing, I've actually plumbed that up to fish on the bottom as well. But I'm not going to feed anything just yet. The only thing that puts me off with bread on here is the colour of the water is still quite thick. It's not clear. I think if you were on a one of the real good car oh hello, that'll do. Oh come off. I can't believe that. That was a proper carp as well, and that's just come off. I'm, I'm sure that was in the mouth. It's a beautiful I can't believe that. Gutted. Absolutely gutted. Must have just caught that. I'm sure that was in the mouth. It's a perfect bite. Can't believe that. It was just like that. Oof. Must have just pricked that, I reckon. Gutted. So I'm fishing with 11, 11 Jora. I'm in open water. I've not got any snags. And 11 Jora gives me, you know, there's lots of little carp in here as well. So I'm fishing for everything. I could probably get away with a white 13, but 11 is going to give me like There is some little stockies in here of like 10, 12 ounces. Obviously the odd skimmer. And that's one fishing 11. If I'd have been, if I'd have been on one of the noted cart pegs or one of the bridge pegs or the fish 13. What a gutter. Good fish as well that was. But it might have been, I don't think it was foul hooked. It's that misty at the moment, you've got to, to see your float. Let's flick that in. So what I'm going to do, plan of action really, is just start on feeding just micros for carp and see what happens. But this is what I would say, like, this this, this area of the lake, we've always, always known it is no man's land. It has its occasions when it can be brilliant, but a lot of the time you are sort of, you know, sort of trying to make, um, you know, make a good weight up and it's very, very difficult. This was before we had this cold, the cold weather. Uh, make sure the bread, just flick that away, different area. They do bomb about on that far side. They sort of just go up and down, especially when the match starts. They're probably on a bit uh, panic a little bit. They know they're you know, they know they're being fished for. Loads of people normally start across. some sort of an indication, but I think it was a roach. So I'm not going to 
I'm not going to stay on bread too long. Even though I had that bite, I, you know, with the colour of the water. I also want to put a little bit, I might, I might even put a little bit of bait in where I'm fishing on the bottom and just fish away from it for a couple more minutes with bread. Because if they are eating, I don't want to miss it. Any bites, Mike? That's a liner, isn't it? See that? Get like this other little liner then again. Just going to poke these shot up around the bottom of the float so I can sort of flick it out and let that bread drop down through. It's I'm just going to put a slightly smaller punch on as well, just to try it. There might be roach bites, to be fair. If you've got a couple of tiny roach in your peg. You can probably see I'm fishing quite a long line as well. Probably got three foot from the float to the elastic. And when, you, when I fish bread, a lot of the time I do that because it just gives you the option of flicking it around, especially when the water's cold, clear. It's not clear today, the water, but it just keeps your pole tip away from where you're fishing. You can just flick it around. I'm just watching, you know, having a little look around. Gary, cup three down to my right, he's just had a little cart, but he's fishing, I'm sure he's fishing on the bottom. He's got a little pot on. It'd be nice when that sun burns through the mist. But it's probably one of the worst conditions where we've, we've had a boatload of rain and then you get this overnight cold bit like we've had. It normally does it in. Normally. So you've just got to be very careful today. It's going to be, you know, a lot of, especially in this area, I think you're going to, you're going to have to have a lot of patience here today, odd, odd fish. So all my carp lines, really, I'm fishing 11 Jura, and I've set up a couple of uh, 9 Jura for fishing basically in the deep water because I think that's where I'm probably going to catch. If I go for, I won't just be fishing for skimmers, I'll be fishing for everything. And I thought I'll put a 9 Jura on there because if I look at carp, it ain't a problem. But if I look at skimmer, I've obviously got a real good chance of getting it out instead of it sort of thrashing on the surface of the water. Gary's in and again, two to my, uh, three to my right. But normally, they are better pegs, but, and like I said, there is quite a lot of small carp in here. And for me, personally, they're feeding fish. They're, fit, they're looking for bait, rather than sort of dobbing bread for them. So I, I don't really want to sit there too long on that. I'm going to definitely feed a little pot full of A little bit of bait over there, a few micros, a little bit of tiny bit of ground bait. It's probably about just over two foot. I'm just going to start. I'm not going to put any maggots in, I'm just going to start with double maggot on the hook. I've got some expanders. I'm just going to go over it to start with double red, double dead red, and a tiny little bit of ground bait and micros, little ball. I'm going to squeeze it into the pot. Very, very little bait. So I've got myself lined up with a post bang opposite me. Let's just get that out. So I've come off the far bank just a little bit. There's a nice little area there, a nice little flat like. And I can go to my right, I've plumbed up to my right towards the spare peg a bit in the same depth as well. 
so it can give me two two lines to fish if I want to. The nice thing about having two lines over there, which I plumbed up the same, of course, like a thick fog coming past at the moment, is I can put like a line with a bit of ground bait in, a line with micros in, just neat micros, and then see what I think's best. And I can feed look what I can feed one line with maggots. I think you're probably getting the gist of what goes through my mind. Depending on what I've, you know, depending on how the fishing is, really. There we go. So that was on that little ball of my cruising ground bait. Double dead on the hook. Feels like a decent fish. That shows you how cold it is. Quite more like a bream than it is a carp. I said eleven Jora. It's bang on for this sort of fishing this time of year. was <laughs> good start looked like it was hooked under the chin there you go that's my second bite of that little bit of bait Got a little bit of pro flashes green few micro, same sort of thing as you put around a method really. One of the little carp. That'll do on a nice cold day like today. It's a double dead maggot. Beautiful little carp. moment it is fishing tough so another little ball just trying to make a little ball really rather than loose I can always put a bit of loose in but at the moment just making it into a little ball Definitely going to be a, a tough day, I think, for a lot of people today. So probably about two metres to my right, going towards the empty peg. I've plumbed up the same, so I can use the same rig. And in a minute, I'm going to put a few micros in there. There's obviously a few fish over there, I've looked. The one on the bread, unfortunately, I don't know whether it's fouled up. Or it, I don't think it's fouled up. It's just come off. And I've had two indications on this. I just got to look after them other lines as well. In my mind, while I'm fishing this, I'm looking, you know, thinking about the other lines. And I will. Oh, here we go. That's a nice fish. Not very happy, that one.
There's our little 4B10 F1 Maggot, 015 mainline, 013 bottom to a 16 GPM. Nice fish there, that. <clears throat> yeah, don't, don't be scared with the Jura. You can have to give them some, you know, a little bit of pressure. I'm also looking around now. When I'm fishing, I'm looking around. You know, seeing where people's catching. If it's so obvious, especially along here, I'm, I mean, Mike's fishing close in, he's not hooked a carp yet. I'm always looking for that. Trying to feed me, you know, find, trying to get some information from other people, even though they might not be fishing the same as me, you know, where they're catching. If everybody's sort of sat over not getting a bite, then it might be the case of not bothering. That's a nice fish. Probably six pound. Five pound at least, I would say. So I'm just going to carry on with that. In a minute, I'm going to feed a few micros on that other line, slightly to my right, same depth. And I'm fishing in about, I reckon, it's two and a half foot, even though it's freezing cold. I think we all know now on these canal lakes, you know, even though it is shallow over with the pressure of the angling, they do swim up and down that far bank, whatever the conditions, it's whether they want to feed or not. See that little plop go in then. Just drop that right over the top. I said I've opted to come a little bit off the far bank. Because it comes up about another eight inches. And I thought today, two and a half foot of water, freezing cold morning. I've, I've, I could go over later on if I wanted to, but. I'm not really fussed about putting maggots in at the moment either. If I can just use that ground bait and micros to draw them in and have an up bait. I could put any up bait on that line. I could put corn, you know, maggots, expanders. There we go. Beautiful that. Oh, hello. I had a tiny little liner then, little, you see the float move slightly to the left. I thought, don't strike, we just had a tiny little dink then. You can tell that cold's affected the water. They're just like really sort of lethargic. Lovely. Oh, hello. He is not happy. Line's just gone round his body then.
these are the ones you want. Get a few of them mixed in and um, yes, lovely fish that, lovely acorn common. I'm not going to pick him up because my hands are absolutely freezing. He's six, seven pound I expect. So, so 16 GPM, 013 bottom, just strung out little 4B10 F1 maggot, which I always do with my little rigs. Another little ball with that ground bait. I love that sort of fishing. Take your time. And then try and drop that. There are some absolute stunning pegs I'd love to have drawn today. And my drawing ability at the moment, I know people probably say different when they watch this film, but it's not great. You know, in uh, you, you know, that's where these films are so nice because it's reality. It's what happens. And you know, to make the most of where you draw is what match fishing is all about. You might not win, but you might frame. You might win your section. And if these films can help you do that, to me, that's what we've done. As you know, as a company, as an individual, that's what this is all about. So whilst we weren't filming, I actually, only with my little pot that I've got, I've got a little, it's the smallest CAD pot at the moment. I've put a few micros on my other line, slightly to the right. Because my theory is, is sometimes if you feed that line after catching one and you have to wait 10 minutes for a bite for example you might just feed that and drop on your other line and get a bite within three or four minutes so sometimes having those two lines go in together at the same depth you know maybe two three meters apart you can catch another four, five, six, eight fish during the match. You don't know. But some days it works, some days it doesn't. But the days it work, or the days that it does work, then you can catch a lot more weight, which is obviously trying to build in a match fishing situation. That's what we need. But it might just be a day where I've got to be really patient, feed a little morsel, if you like, of bait and wait a little bit of time. I might, might have to come back in, feed again. That's something that I've got to try and work out during the day, if the fish stay in the area. Thank you very, thank you very much, Zolt. See, privileged I am with Zolt out. Oh, that's going to warm my hands up a bit. Anyway, a bit of a catch up. Oh, just. Literally, the last 15 minutes, the line that I've set up. So I was fishing 14 and a half, which is probably about 18 inches, two foot off the far bank. And I'm fishing at 13 at the moment. And uh, that is on like a little, it's not flat, flat. I found a nice little area. It's right on the end of my pole. It's not too bad. It's on a bit of a slope. And it's probably fishing in like, four foot of water and I've actually caught a, an eight pound carp there a small stocky and I've just missed a couple of indications and all I'm feeding there is micros at the moment because I'm thinking I just I'm not sure about putting maggots in I've actually started I've made a decision on the 11 meter line to my right which is in sort of open water if you like in the deepest water 
it's the same depth as what it is at a top kit plus two. I've put a few maggots in there and a little ball of ground bait, like I did, it, you know, like I said to you at the start, and I've started loose feeding a few maggots over that because I'm thinking, ah, do you know what I mean? At least I can just fire a few in. I can have a look at it. If it's any good, great. But on these lines, I'm just trying to stick with either micros. There we go. Because obviously I'm trying to catch carp as well. I think that. Not sure what that is. Feels like a decent skimmer. So that's on that four foot line. It might be a little stocky that. Yeah. Oh no, it's a crassio. Mike, what's a crassio count? A silvers or a carp? Carp. So a crassio, look. Don't mind catching them today. That's on a maggot, a dead maggot and a floral pinky. One of my favourite up baits when things are tough. Said so not feeding anything, just micros. I reckon them indications could have been that. And I just cad pot in half a little cad pot of micros. Tapping them out, make sure they're right run, right run fishing. So depths of water, I bet I wouldn't have catch a crassio over. They're funny fish they are. The one thing I've got to be careful, if there is crassios about, there's not millions in this lake. Corn can be a great peg, uh, a great hook bait. So on that line, I've got a little 4B12 F1 maggot. Because of the conditions are really nice. And with it being cold, I can get away with little rigs. And if I can, I do try, especially like two to four foot of water, you know, 4B10, 4B12s. I've set a 4B14 up for the deepest part of the lake because it is probably getting on for six foot. So on that line, I've had three fish now and missed a couple of indications and pretty quick too. And before I come off of this line, I fed me two long lines. So I put a little ball of ground bait and micros in, and over to me right, I put just micros in. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. I fed the other lines as well. So I fed a top kit plus two with a little ball. I fed a top kit plus two down to me right, which is in the same sort of area where I'm fishing now, away from the bank. I can't actually use the same rig, it's slightly different depth, which is a bit of a pain. There we go. Another indication then. Little tiny dink. Might be another crash here, that. Or a little stocky. No, never crash here. Crafty fish, then. Look at that. Awesome fish, but crafty. It's really weird at um, Carasios, is I've never really had any success on catching them on expanders. They're f you can catch them on hard pellets, you can catch them on corn, you can catch them on meat, catch them on maggots and worms. But I've never had any success on expanders, which is proper strange. Whether it's just me or not, I don't know, but that's what I tell you anyway. So. I'm just gonna feed a few maggots on that 11 meter line. You know, that's the sort of decision I've made. You never know. That could be, I might not even go on it, but it's a, it's a, it's a line that I'm gonna feed. Like me, all my other lines that I'm not fishing at the moment, I just look after them. And just trying to make the most of a, you know, the situation that I've got. But 
but the mist, oh, there's a nice fish just top down the middle. I think that was a big skimmer. But they're not catching. There's like Mike struggling to my left. I think he's got um, one skimmer and a few, a few little roach. Matt to my right is struggling. Gary's had a couple of carp to his right. It's not a great area. So at the moment I'm doing all right. I've got three decent carp, two stockies, two carasio, a couple of um, and a couple of silvers, a little perch. Gonna lift and drop that like a float length. I can't really see a lot of people. The mist is so thick at the moment. Oh, that was a bite then. So I just lift and drop that, and like a second or two later, it shot under. Might be another crash, you. But it is proper cold today. Horrible. But lovely conditions, flat calm. You can see every little tiny indication of what I might try in a minute. It's just put a tiny little bit of F1 corn on this. Just try it on the hook and see if they'll nail it. There we go. Never nice fish. So that four foot line at the moment. So that was on a pinky and pinky and maggot. There's one thing about this venue. I've caught a lot of fish on that hook bait over the years. It's not as if I fish it every week, but I was here on Saturday, I fished the first match I fished here for a long time on the pole. And a real good bait was a maggot and a flora pinky. Same to a lot of venues I go to in the winter. For bream, carp and F1s. Decent fish, eh? I'm trying to give you some timings. I've probably fished for 45 minutes before I fed the other lines. From the start, obviously. Or after the start. Oh, I don't believe it. I think that might have been fouled up. What a pain. I think I've hooked a couple of fish under the chin. Well, oh, gutted. Didn't feel like it was fouled up to. So let's put another little ball, a little tiny half half fill, and I'm not putting a ball in there because it is on a bit of a shelf. I'm just putting them in loose. Just so they sit on the shelf or whatever shelf there is there. Just so they sit on it. But when I'm fishing on the shelf like I am there, oh look at that, I do try and fish to the end of my section, so it's literally right on my elbow. So I know exactly where I've plumbed up. Definitely a nice little line that though. Gutted about that fish though, that was a decent fish. So all I'm thinking about now is obviously those two long lines where I've started at 14 and a half. I'm not sometimes that bothered about feeding them, looking after them, because I think the fish you catch over there, they are swimming around over there anyway, they're there. And if you put a bit of bait in like I did this morning, obviously I've dobbed bread for 10, 15 minutes. As soon as I've had a bit of bait, I caught a couple. And I think you can go back to that and do it again. So I'm not that bothered about priming them. The lines I'm worried about priming them is my top kit plus two, this down to my right, which is the same area as what I'm fishing at the moment, sort of three and a half foot, four foot of water. Because I think these lines today, with it being especially mid-match, could be really good. 
well, I don't see really good, but they could be the, the pegs that, you know, the, the area where you get an odd bite and an odd fish. And it's not going to be, you know, the fishing's going to be tough for a lot of people today because of the conditions. The water temperature's plummeted now. And obviously we've got quite a few on today, which is going to make a big difference. If we had every other peg along here, that would make a difference as well. But we haven't got that today. It's two in one empty. At least we've got a bit of room. Lift that out. Just let that go down. I've had a couple of bites just as it settled, but they might have been little liners. Dave, Dave Ride, who's on peg two, he's, he's catching really well. That's what you call the island pegs, and they they have been producing really well in the last few weeks. Well, they, they produce well all year round, to be honest. And uh, he's he's getting loads and loads of indications and in catching fish. But along here, it's definitely not. It definitely ain't happening at the moment. It's sort of along this bit. I can only vouch really for along this bit, but it's really tough, to be honest. And I thought I'd just have a look at my 11 meter line where I just fed that little bit of ground bait at the start, a few maggots, and then catapulting a few maggots over the top. I just looked in there, I've caught two roach. I thought, you know, I thought I might catch some skimmers, I might catch some carp, but I've only just gone in on there. I've made a, missed a bite and had two decent roach. They're not small roach, they're up to sort of, I think I've had one like nine ounces and one about five ounces i just thought i'd have a quick look because you never know your luck on these sort of venues you know you can go in there you might catch some carp i'm hoping that maybe later in the match if i decide to go back on it i won't just neglect it i will keep feeding it with a catapult some carp might sort of find the you know find it and settle on it same with some skimmers, but there ain't a lot coming out. There's a few of the guys fishing down the middle and stuff, and it's not as if they're looking carp and big silvers. It is. It ain't really happening. Mike to my right, he fishes here all the time, and he's really struggling. He's got a skimmer and a couple of roach. He's got one little, little one little pasty carp. So you can tell by that it is. And you can see they're not striking, they're sat there for a long time. And at the moment it's switched right off on this area anyway. There's a little tiny indication then. I'm gonna fire a few more maggots over the top. I'm not gonna stay on it too long. I did try a piece of corn on that four foot line to be fair, just sat there. It's just like nothing. I think it's gonna be a sort of maggot job because there's no there's there's not a lot of silvers fit feeding either. It's definitely taking its toll this morning, it's cold. And the mist, the mist just won't lift. It wouldn't surprise me if it's here all day, this mist, actually. I mean, it's midday now and it's still like... There's a little bite there. The bites are absolutely ridiculous. So, 4B14 F1 maggot on this line. Nice roach. Four or five ounces. No, maggots at his mic. Mike loves his swordfish fishing. And he's, uh, yeah, it's not really happening today for him. So, like I said, it's probably five and a half foot there. And I think the mistake what a lot of people make 
in a match like this is they don't pick a catapult up enough. And when it's really tough, that can make a huge difference. Lost that one. Just going to take one of those little adjustments shot off because I've got to double see that with that mist. Just got a single maggot on. Even some of the real good pegs, what I would call real good pegs, are struggling at the minute. So I'm just catapulting like 10, 15 maggots over it. All me, all me main lines are 15 today because it, it has been fishing brilliant this lake. And um, that's a bite. Oh, hello. Oh dear. <laughs> that feels like a real big zoo. There are some big ones in here, some doubles in here. That feels like a proper lump, that. And that's what I said, that's what you make your own luck at this game. You know, a little bit of ground bait in there at the start. Got nine jaw on here. Bonus fish today, these. Just really weird fighting these today. They're strange, because that cold air and cold water. Didn't like it. Like that. So I'll go care if I... Gotta get me pole sections back on here in a minute. So I brought it down to nine drawer on that line, thinking like if I do catch skimmers and roach, but if I do hook another big one like I got on here, I can handle it. This is what I use at tunnel when the fishing's still pretty good. I got 011 to a 16 SFL. Rather than 013. Just thinking a little bit more finesse for the skimmers and stuff from being in this area as well. Also, if I'd have been in a different area and I thought, fancy it for a big weight of carp, I'd probably still be fishing 013. I can still nip up to 013 if it gets kicking off. So I'm going to get this fish and just put a little bit more bait on that 13 meter four foot line. Not happy. Zolt's got his new glasses on, and he said he can even see the bikes today that I normally see, so well impressed with him at the moment. Even he's like, there's a difference, it's unbelievable. I don't believe it. I do not believe that. Just don't know where it's fouled, I don't, I don't know. Gutted. Absolutely gutted. Not sure. Not sure if it's foul looked. It probably was actually. I don't know. It was going a bit silly. But I didn't swear, did I, Zolt? No, they can still keep it on the film. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a little bit more maggot in. There we go. 
straight in, the skimmer. Before I go, oh. before I go back out, I'm just going to put a few micros at 13. bit over I haven't fed that for ages 14.5 where I started Micros on a top kit plus two. Back out at eleven. looking around as well very very hard and even Zolt said it is difficult so I'm also bearing that in mind as well of what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do you never know with a line like this you can go and get in a few skimmers a few roach and then all of a sudden wallop carp because there's a lot of carp in this lake a lot of carp there's been a lot of maggot fishing short on this lake recently before it got cold ridiculous in indications though it's so small Big roach. There's loads of tension here as well. I haven't seen none of them caught yet. But they can be in they can be in little packs. Some big tension here as well, up to sort of six pound, believe it or not. This is proper unusual for, you know, snake lakes. So that top kit plus two line, all I've fed there is micros. I'm thinking you know, later on the match, I can drop in there with an expander on. Same with that line down to my right, and hopefully, maybe I'll catch some fish on expanders late. If not, I'll probably have to go down the maggot road again with those lines. It's about two hours to go now, and it is proper tough it's tough I went back over on my 14 and a half meter line never had a bite I come back to my four foot line that was the same I've 
just gone back on the 11 meter line in that open water. I've had a couple of roach, a skimmer, just gone to white maggot, single white maggot. And the bites are absolutely horrific. They're so small. Even Zolt was like, are you kidding me, aren't you? I'm like, nope. And I've just started chucking now some maggots over that top kit plus two line because I just think it ain't happening. And I don't think it's gonna happen. I think it's gonna be tough. <coughs> there is areas on here where they're having a few. It's probably the areas where I fancy drawing myself, to be honest. It's tough around here, but I'm sort of wingling a few fish out. And it's, to be honest, I need to feed a little bit of ground bait, a little bit of acorn carpo. I'm not cad potting, I'm loose feeding. And how many times have I said that on these films when it is like this? Picking your catapult up. I'm catching more than anybody else along this bit. I think, in this area anyway. Mike's had a couple of little stockies to my left. Matt's only had one skimmer to my right. So that shows you how hard it is. I'm only pinging like 10 maggots over the top. Feeding a few out in the hand. Mike's just started getting a few bites, fishing sort of that four foot line. So a couple of little stocky carp. They are stocky carp, but they've been in here for a while. They're not, they're not sort of brand new fish. And then sometimes you've got to wait a long time for a bite and then then you get like two bites really quick. There don't seem to be a, a lot you can do to actually sort of get them going. Dave Ride, who's had a brilliant start, he's, he's dried right up as well. He was getting a bite of chuck and he's slowed down. He's caught really well though in the first hour and a half or two, well, hour and a half, hour and three quarters. First hour was brilliant for him. I'm just gonna come back and put a tiny little ball of ground bait in there just to see what happens. Like a little marble. You never know, if there's one there, Drop that straight on it. It's definitely fishing a lot tougher than what I thought it would be. But I knew this area would be tough anyway, because it is it is a tough area. If it was fishing well, then it would be different because the fish are feeding, you know, looking for bait, you can you know, if you get it right, if you get it better, you can catch more. But being in a tough area like this, it is, it's tricky. It's so hard to sort of try and compete some days. You can only, right, look at that. That was straight on that little ball. It might be foul, look at that. Yeah, don't feel right that. But I will try and get it out because obviously everything's going to count today. Yeah, I don't think that's in the mouth. Definitely one of them days where they're just swimming around. That's going to get angry in a minute, that fish. He is not happy. Decent fish, yo, fouled up. Now, if I get Zolt's luck, I might get this out. <laughs> Ooh. 
It's a good fish salt, that, isn't it? I am trying to catch it. Very well, very needed, that thing. Look at him. Not sure. I, I could just sense when I looked that. It wasn't immediate when I looked it. It was just sort of a little bit of a, you know, struck and you just think, oh, I missed that. And then you've latched into it. it might be under his chin with a bit of luck. Just throw a few maggots on that short line. And I'm only gonna throw a few as well. It's only gonna be like 10. I've literally put, I took a number 11 start off and I've actually put a number 12 back on because the bites I've been having on here are so small. Even for the roach and the skimmers that I've caught on it and I've not caught that many. That's a proper big, that's a good fish. It's a big fish for in here, that is all. That is one of Mark Bartlett's special ones. Oh, come on. Oh, no. <laughs> Mike, don't say anything. That's a big fish, that, isn't it, for in here? Oh, gutted. Gutted. That's a proper fish, that. Bit of squeaky bum moment. I think Mark's, Mr. Bartlett has stuck him in from, accidentally from the main lake. I'll have that. Thank you very much. Good job, Zolt got me a cup of tea. I'm not going to show you where he's up, Zolt. <laughs> he is in the chin. That's a good fish for on here, that. That's probably one of the biggest fish in this lake, I would say. I would apologise. But I think I deserve that today, Zolt, don't you? <laughs> Sorry about that, Mike. Did you see it? No, he's pretty big. Right, so I'm going to put another little disc of ground bait in. I don't blame you not looking, Mike. Better to look the other way when I was doing that. Another little marble in. Just trying to drop that right on it. Loose feed a few maggots. As you can probably tell, I've gone down the sort of maggot road now. Because it is not happening. There we go. Amazing. So another little nugget of that green pro thatchers. It's incredible, that little bit of ground bait. 
I was away last week um, fishing a festival and without it, I didn't draw particularly great. But without that bit of green thatchers, I would have been nowhere. Like I said, single white maggot. White maggot, never write off white maggots. Always carry some with me. Sometimes you don't need them, but on their day. Feels like a tent, that. Sort of banging away, probably not, but it feels like a tent. There's some big tension in this lake. Yeah, that's a carp, it's gotta be. Yeah. Oh. Four pan. All right, let's do that again. Tiny little nugget. Let's see like that. I just gotta go really careful I shit that out. Dump that straight over the top. Just, I've got myself lined up with a post over there. And literally, you might not keep going on that. Though. That's the only thing. When you do that, it doesn't always keep going. You got might have to come off of it and get away from it for a bit. Loose with a few maggots, come back to it, and then put another little ball in. It gives you the confidence then to actually start feeding a bit of bait. Not too much mine. There we go. So you can just think, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, little ball of ground bait. It's like they were there, a few little indications, and put that little ball in. A bit stocky, right, but I'm not bothered. Lovely, when you start getting a few bites on a freezing cold day like today. That is the power of ground bait though. You know, it's no doubt. No. It's a shame that some venues don't allow ground bait in. Um, If you've done this in the summer, it'd probably be an absolute waste of time. But, as soon as it goes cold, whether you're fishing for silvers or a carp, definitely got me going now this. Sort of just got me thinking, come on. It's like now, my feeling is now, when I go back on that four foot line, if I go on it, which I probably will, if I can just fire a few over the top, if they, if they are in the area, and go in there, a little ball of ground bait, and maybe pin them into like, you know, rot on me up bait. And I find sometimes, 
you don't need to feed ground bait when you're not fishing it. Maybe feed a bit at the start. Nice skimmer. Putting a nice little weight together, really. If I could sort of frame from here, I'd be well happy to be honest. Especially when you know the way it's fished today, on the if particularly in this area. So you can always use a punch as well for your. I'm just making it out of my hand, but if you wanted to, you could use a little one of your bread punches to make a little a little sort of piece of ground bit the size of an 8 or 10 mil pellet. There's something else I've learned about today, isn't it, Zolt? See? Freezing cold, didn't you, Zolt? He's Hungarian, but he is feeling the cold. And you, me old babbers. All his batteries are going flat. <laughs> All right, let's concentrate. Like I said, 4B14 F1 maggot. 16 SFL, 011 power line, single maggot at the moment. The amazing thing is I could be on a different area of the lake and you know be confident to sit there with expanders on, a bit of corn and probably catch on it, but this area I think you're just you're just gonna be waiting too long where with maggots. You can catch an odd little carp, an odd better carp, some skimmers, and you know, it gives you the confidence you're going to get some bites. And you find that uh, it's probably what's happened now. You can't, a lot of the time, you can't keep doing it, you can't keep putting another little ball in. You have like a little, oh, so that was a lovely little indication that it's so hard that you do, it's so frustrating when you miss a bite or you miss an indication. <laughs> to go and uh, I've had a couple more fish on my 11 meter line a couple more skimmers there we go it's a good line that another little ball of ground bait I've had a couple of big skimmers I've got another carp on now I did have a quick look on my top pit plus two line I had a couple of indications but nothing it's a bit of a gamble at the moment. I'm doing all right from where I am. Probably winning this, well, I don't know, really. Oh, yeah. It's not the end of the match, that. And this, um, it's a good line. It feels like another good fish, that. Definitely been a few, them stockies ain't been here, not in numbers. So I'll come on my top kit plus two, dropped it in there. Still on single maggot. I uh, had a couple of indications, nothing. So when I went back out to me, I did drop a slightly bigger ball in on my top kit plus two. It's a bit of a tricky one now. 
There's a Gary two, well, three to my right. He's had a few over, but I'm probably beating him, doing what I'm doing. And I've had some good ones. These, you no, know, these fish, what I've got on here, they're going to be massive today. I mean, look at that, that's a proper unit. Not massive, but you know, for this lake. Ooh, steady, steady. I've got to go a bit careful. I'm only on a O11 and a 16 SFL. But you can still give it some. You can still pull quite hard. Look at that. I mean, that's a proper winter carp, isn't it? For a little canal lake. Look at them, Zolt. Hungarian. Bonus fish that today. A bonus. I've had a couple a little bit smaller than that, haven't I? Not many. That'll do. Oh. Probably eight pound, I would have thought. All tangled up in the main line. I cannot believe how cold it is today. It's not not warmed up at all. Get in, man. Just going to take that little tiny start off. So I'm just loose feeding everything at the minute. Everywhere seems to be better than anything and just putting that little ball of ground bait in. And I'm sure if they'd have been having a go, it'd have been like expanders you know, corn, and then just unfortunately, you know, in this area, with it being that cold today, ground bait has definitely been, well, loose feeding, and ground bait has been the crack for certain. So I'm still feeding that four foot line, but I'm not sure about going over on it, to be honest. See, that was a bite then. I think that might have been a roach. Probably just have another look on this short line in a bit, because if that goes, I just don't know if there's enough fish in the area for it to kick off. No one's really caught short. That's why I'm a little bit reluctant to sort of, even that line I've got down to my right, and I have sort of put a bit of bait in there. I'm sort of reluctant because I'm looking around in this area anyway, and it ain't really happening. And I've caught most of my fish in the deeper part of my peg, so like the four foot of water, and obviously the deepest part of the lake. I think the bridge pegs would be quite good today. A little bit, of, you know, lots of cover. They normally hold quite a lot of those small fish, which today, you know, anything's going to be. Putting anything in the net today in numbers is going to be massive today. Tiny little indication again, another little little stocky that one. 
is a smaller mark. I think the sun's gonna the sun's trying to break out. Mike, it's one of your favourites. Tinker Tench, that is Mike. He'd be gutted, Mike, because he loves his tench. Hey, have you had one yet? Sorry. Have you had a tench yet? Tench? Yeah. No. Come on, Mike, you're meant to be the tench master. I might just have a little... I'm just going to put a tiny little ball out there where I've been fishing. And just have a little look on that top kit plus two. Because... As we all know, we've 40 minutes to go. So I'm just going to feed that. Just have a little look. I think if I persevere with this line, even throughout the day, I would have caught an odd fish there, but it just never felt it was going to be strong enough. So I put a little ball in there, probably 10 minutes ago, I reckon, a bigger ball, but a little bit smaller than a golf ball. Because when I went in there, it was a bit like, just felt, I did have two little indications on maggots, but just felt there was nothing there really. Let's fire a few maggots on that 11 meter line. So there's no different in depth. That's the same depth as what I'm fishing at 11 meters, but it's obviously closer to me. Like literally nothing. Shame. That's eleven meter line. Nothing better than dropping on that short line though and it goes under and you start catching late and that's when you can you know, you can sort of come back from from being a bit behind and Ooh. Roach, I think. Let's just try. The lift bite then. I'll tell you what that feels like is a great big tench. Feels like one there. A 
big tents that is though. No. Come on. No. Can't get him up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mike, you don't want to see this, son. This will really get on your nerves. <laughs> this will really get on your nerves when I hold this one up for you. Yeah. Yeah, grip big one. Well, big enough. Look at him for an acorn tench. It do, Mike. We're into the last sort of six minutes, I think, now. And, uh, oh. A bite on the 11 I'm back on the 11 meter line. The last time I spoke to you, I did have that good carp. Um, get 11 meters, and I thought it went a little bit funny, so I just went over where I started this morning at 40 and a half. So obviously, I've been catapulting a few maggots from 13 to 40 and a half. I did go over and catch a good carp of probably six pound. And it's the only bite I had. And I thought I'd just dropped back to 13, which is that four foot line. I had a crassio and a roach, and then nothing. So I'm back at uh, my 11 and a half meter line now. With like five minutes to go. Because it is, wherever I fish, I can get a bite, but I sort of get one bite. Where my 11 meter line seems to be sort of the steadiest the steadiest area really I mean it's still tough but it just feels like I could catch a skimmer I could catch a carp of any size do you know what I mean I could catch a carp from maybe a two pound to like obviously I've had a couple of like oh. it's frustrating as hell because you just know that there's a few fish there and they're just not really having it As I'm doing, or how am I doing, I haven't got a clue. I think there's going to be some good pegs today. You know, this area it has been tough. I've not seen much caught at all to my right. And then to my left, really, Matt's really, really struggled. Gary's had a nice sort of last hour or two fishing. Sort of bottom of the shelf. There we go. That's what I wanted. I feel that's, it feels like a tench again that. And what can I say about the match really? Well it's been a tough one for me. But the fishing's still been absolutely brilliant. Definitely a tench that the way that's knocking around. Yep, yeah, little tench. He's had that down his neck. Hard to know, sort of, you know, ground bait has definitely been the key and loose feeding. Without those two things today, I think I'd have been, I'd have caught some fish, but I definitely wouldn't have caught what I've caught. What have I done in the match? I haven't got a clue. I think, well, we'll find out at the end. Obviously, me and Zolta uh, wait for the wait for the uh, the scales to come round. And um, see how I've done, really. It's been brilliant fishing, considering it's been absolutely bitterly cold today. The, the mist is just about lifted now. We can actually see the other side of the lake for the first time today. And I'm sure if I'd have fished over all day, where I started at 14 and a half, I reckon I could have caught an odd fish, but I just don't think I'd have caught enough. I just don't think in this area, I mean, maybe in a different area, I could have caught more over. 
but it just seems like there's not been enough there. And you'd have been sat there for ages and ages for an odd fish. And that might have been, maybe that might have been, you know, the, the thing to do. But to me, it was like, it just felt like you were never going to do any good. Definitely to my right, they've caught more fish going towards the corner, the lower sort of teen, the teens. But the carp just haven't, like, turned up in numbers, which is, you know, you, you can't expect a lot, really, considering it was so cold this morning. This 11-metre line... Little balls of ground bait, loose feeding a few maggots, you know, going between single and double maggots, single white, red and white. It's been a real good up bait. And they've definitely not been in that. There we go, look at that, that's what we want. Now that, with just a couple of minutes to go, now that feels like a great big tench again. Is that another monster tench? If it is, Mike to my left will be upset because he loves his tench fishing in it. <laughs> it might not be, it might be a carp, but we've literally got three minutes to go, I think. Weight-wise, I haven't got a clue, but that is knocking like a tench. Yeah, I think it is. I'm not sure now actually. It's a tench, never a big one. Nope, nice carp. Tench is a mirror carp. An awesome bit of carp fishing though. It's a great venue. That was on a Man United, red and white. I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to get another one. Unfortunately. I've really enjoyed it though. It's been you know, slow start for everybody. And that, my line there, actually, I think I said earlier in the match, that's the sort of line when you draw an hard area of a lake, which you can just, like, mess around with, loose feed a few. And it's become, the sort of, for me, the best line. So what we'll do, we'll um, start packing up, and uh, we'll give the results in a minute. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the fishing, even though it's been quite a tough area. But, um, like I said, disappointing thing about the top five. I'll not give it a lot of time. Um, and I've, I've sort of looked around and seen a few people try short and it's not really happened in this area. And I haven't really not given it a lot of confidence. But, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I've had some quality fish, which, fingers crossed, uh, uh, helped me. Um, but I think there will be some good areas down this other end of the lake. I think they've caught a lot more fish than what we have up here. But, you know... You never know, um, but we'll let you know the result in a minute and uh, let's start packing away. Right, well, we're in the Cadbury Angling shop. This is the shop on site. And uh, believe it or not, I've actually gone and won the match. So for you guys, you know, to do a live match, there ain't nothing better. I really didn't fancy it this morning where I drew. I've been lucky in a certain way because I've caught some absolute proper big carp today for that lake, the paddock. There is a lot of big carp in there, but I have had some proper nice fish today, sort of seven to 10 pound. I've had 15 pound of silvers, which has made the difference I think there's an 82, I had 87, there's an 82, a 78, several other 70s. It's fished really well considering it was like, I would say it's probably minus two, minus three. 
when I actually got in my van at eight o'clock this morning, it was zero. White over, it's been a horrible day for poor old Zolt to sit in. You know, the mist has been really cold. The bloody, the batteries have gone flat on the cameras plenty of times today, because they do. But it's gonna be, you know, I'm sure you watch the film, I'm sure you've picked up some great tips, you know, how I fished it, you know, my 11 meter line, as you'll see, obviously, as you've seen on the film, that has been one of them best lines. Loose feeding, catapulting. I probably should have done it earlier, but it's that time of year where it's a changeover now. But when you can just loose feed the line, and I said during the film, if you remember, that sometimes that line can be the best line. Top five has been a waste of time, but it's been a waste of time for everybody down my end of the lake. But there you go. I'm sure you, you know, you've obviously enjoyed the film. Thanks for watching. And we'll definitely be on the bank filming another live match very soon. And don't forget to like and subscribe on for the Preston YouTube channel.